Good morning. My name is Pastor Julie, and we welcome you to Juniata United Methodist Church. We are so glad you're here. As we gather together today, we're going to talk about life. It is fragile. Handle with care. Today's scripture is going to come from Ephesians 5 as we share with you the words of Paul. And as we begin this service today, I want you to know that uh, many other churches in the city are following this same series. Um, it's the same scripture, and each pastor is left to develop their own sermon from it, of course, being led by the Holy Spirit. So um, just wanted to let you know that, that there is um, a togetherness now in the city, and we appreciate the spirit that has been work among us. So here we go, Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for the things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessing of today, and we thank you for your word. As we hear your word, may it Spur us on to be more like you. We ask that your spirit is among us, that we open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to receive that spirit. And Lord, may the spirit transform us so that we can become more like you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, today is Pentecost Sunday, so we do celebrate the movement of the Holy Spirit among us. But as I said, um, while the Spirit is at work in us, in us, we still remember that life is fragile and that when it comes to God, we do need to handle our lives with care. You see, God's word is often described as light. A candle. A candle shares light. The flame may be fragile. And as Alton John's song, Candle When the Wind Goes, and it seems to me you live your life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. And I would have liked to have known you, but I was just a kid. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. So as we talk about the flame coming off the candle, we talk about a life that is continually being nurtured and loved by God. Therefore, the flame continues. And when we live our lives connected with Christ, even though we may not be here on earth, the legend of our connection with Christ continues as the story of Christ is shared over and over again. Thanks be to God. The flames of Pentecost, they still stand strong because they were of God and that they are of God. And a thousand of years later, we are still celebrating the miraculous day of Pentecost. The day when people began to speak in tongues of fire and it spread and it spread and the world came to know Christ. And those in the community of faith grew and thousands were being saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. The legend in this song is Christ Jesus. The light of Christ, which continues to be lit and burning strong in your life and my life. A candle. Jesus does desire us to be that flame that continues to burn on a candle. Why? Because a candle brings light to the world around it. A candle that is real and authentic will likely share more light than a candle that has a fake flame burning on it. 
Therefore, living our lives as authentic as we can as a life for Christ is essential as our lives are meant to bring glory to our God. People are watching every step that we take on this walk. That is why it is so important to try to live our lives in a way that honors God as we live out our lives, our lives in a real, tangible way. You see, people watch us every day to see if our lives are authentic and if our lives truly do make a difference in the world around us. If people can see what it is to be the light of Christ, there's a good chance that they will want to share that light with others. And therefore, that person who sees it as a light, the authentic light of Christ, they too share it with the world. However, the unfortunate thing is if they don't see it as being authentic or real, they likely will not be drawn to Christ. Therefore, the light dims day after day. And as that person continues to drive away from Christ, eventually the flame goes out. The spirit can reignite it, we know, but there needs to be a connection between us and God. In Ephesians 5, Paul talks about the church of Ephesus, and he gives them some instructions on how to keep their candles burning brightly, and also gives us instructions on how to live our lives the way God intends us to live. Here are some instruction that Paul gives to the church of Ephesus. He says, don't grieve the spirit. Do not grieve God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Get rid of all the bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of malicious behavior. Instead, he says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Jesus Christ has forgiven you. Another instruction Paul gives us is, children, walk in God's light. Often when children are little, they mock their parents because that is a model that they see. Or somebody close to them, they might model them as well. Today, we need to remember to find out what is acceptable to God and that walk in that pathway that God desires for us. Paul also gives instructions on marriage. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is also the head of the church. And today, Paul is giving the church, us, instructions on walking in wisdom. Here's what he says. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Walking in wisdom. Walking can occur by taking step by step or simply moving forward until you reach your destination. Walking in wisdom can be defined as taking the journey of life, knowing that God has given each of us a mind and a heart. God did not create them just to look good on our bodies, but God gave us these two important functioning body parts so that we can live our lives knowing and living into the will of God. Paul also instructs us to walk, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Paul is saying to the church, he's saying to us today, seize the very moment of time. Plan for today. Live for today. Forget about what was yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow. Here's the words he shares in Matthew 6, 33 to 34. Actually, Matthew shares this in the gospel lesson. But seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Wisdom is the opposite of foolishness, my friends. Wisdom means I'm going to seize every choice in my life, 
that God gives to me. And with that influence that God gives me, hopefully with God working through me, I can change the culture, you and I together, maximizing to the fullest through the work of the spirit within us. One pastor, as I was preparing for the message, um, entitled his message, he was, it was a male, Life is Amazing. I love that title. Life is Amazing. And if you didn't catch it, I want you to know it's because life is like a maze. And I don't want to take that title because certainly it belonged to somebody else's title of their sermon. But how true it is. Life can be described as walking through a maze. We try to take two steps forward. Then a fork comes in the road and we ask ourselves or we ask God, which way should we go? Should I make a left or should I make a right? Often we want to take the easiest way. But the easiest way is not always a choice does, that God desires for us to make. We should ask ourselves, which way will we best serve God? Which choice would God want us to take at this time of decision making? We know that God truly desires for us to use our heads and our heart together to make wise decisions that will lead us to get to God's will. How do we know God's will, you might say? You see, as we grow in that relationship with God, through study, through prayer, through worship, it is likely that we will be able to make a decision that will bring us peace. Knowing that peace, we can usually gain as we discern God's will in making our decisions because by being in God's word, by being in conversation with God, we could become to know more about God. Therefore, we can more easily summarize the decision that God would like us to make. In summary, God's will tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. That is God's will. How oh, would our world be a better place? Wouldn't it be changed if everyone would love their neighbors as themselves? Wouldn't the church grow beyond comprehension if everybody was concerned about their neighbor or about gaining uh, God's glory rather than gaining their own personal insight or their own personal will? You see, God wants us to love our neighbor as ourselves. But in that, most profoundly, love God. As Paul goes on, he tells the church not to be drunk with wine, but to be filled with the Spirit. In saying this, he's noting that there is an outside force to both of these situations. Wine can certainly be detrimental to the spirit within us. Wine, if we have too much of it, can cause us to make poor choices. However, on the other hand, if we are filled with the spirit, we have wisdom from God. Wisdom that helps us to understand God's word. Wisdom that helps us live and speak God's truth. On this hand, wine takes power over you, but the Spirit of God will empower you from within. God's Spirit will give you a mind that has clarity and a vision for truly what God desires. Too much wine. It can tear us down because... Too much wine can lead us to not having control over our actions. But the Spirit of God, on the other hand, gives us fruit of the Spirit, known as love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
In summary, it's not about how much of the spirit we have, but it's how much the spirit literally has us. Paul notes that we can also be filled by the Spirit as we speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melodies unto the Lord. All these practices not only build us up, but they also build our faith and therefore they build up the church. In today's world, when you look on Facebook or you look at television, there is so much harm being done through words that are shared in politics, the coronavirus, blaming people. Some people do not want to engage in a safe behavior of wearing a mask or keeping your safe distance. So then they say negative words that bring division and harm to us and the world around us. Even within the church, some people can say, well, they haven't returned to church yet. Where is their faith in God? Then on the other hand, some of us may have a population that is a high risk of connecting to the virus. Therefore, we need to take steps to care for our beloved. Remember, God has given us both a brain and also a heart. Even if you find yourself in the news too much, you can find yourself being downtrodden. So make wise decisions. And please know that I'm not talking about the escaping the reality of our world, but rather I'm talking about being filled with a promise and a hope of God by singing psalms and songs and giving thanks to God for all that we have been given. Can you feel it in those singing of the songs? And speaking of the good psalms that we have, they build us up. It doesn't pull us down. And as the words of the being a follower of John Wesley are shared, and as Reuben Job takes them and makes them in more modern language so we can easier understand it, he says these are John Wesley's three simple rules. Do no harm, do all the good you can, and stay in love with God. My friends, my prayer for you today is that when you leave this time of worship, you will serve God by celebrating the blessings that you have in your lives, by noting them one by one. And my prayer is that you will also share a blessing with somebody else. My other prayer for you is that you will limit that negative input but celebrate and allow God's light and life to flow through you by singing songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. And remember, life is fragile. Let your life be handled with God's tender, loving care. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for the blessing of today. Thank you for this time together in your spirit and your word. Lord, as we leave this place, I just ask that your spirit, your light continue to burn deep within us. And Lord, let our lights shine brightly so that the world can see and know who God truly is as we display your beautiful works. Lord, today as we gather together, I give you thanks for all of them serving in the hospitals, giving health care. I thank you for our city, this place that you've given us to walk together hand in hand with our neighbors, loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for that true, true gift. And help us to live into that as we first of all live the way you want us to live. Lord, today we pray for those who are sick those who separated from their families. We ask that you bind them together in Jesus' name. And for all of those who serve our country or serve you through missionary work, Lord, be with them, keep them safe, and let them know that you are on their side. And let us share the words that you are on their side. 
that you are on our side too. So Lord, as we go forward, we just give you thanks and praise for the gift of today and help us to live as yesterday was history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is the present and it's a gift that you have given to us. That is why they call it the present. And for that, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, my friends, I thank you for joining us today. It's my prayer that you will be blessed and be a blessing to others. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit each step of the way. Amen.